Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL course environmental chemistry and microbiology this course will be taught by professor shudha goel and myself professor anjali pal we are both from civil engineering department iit kharagpur we have divided this course into two parts the first part environmental chemistry will be covered by me and the second part environmental microbiology will be taught by professor shudha goel now in my first module i have covered the acid bases and salts in the second module i have covered chemical equilibrium in the third module i have discussed about the chemical kinetics what is the order what is the rate what is the rate rate expression then differential rate law and then integrated rate law how to determine the order all those things i have discussed this is my fourth module and this is also chemical kinetics but here i am discussing uh, the mechanism which is also under the scope of chemical kinetics and uh, in this lecture uh, i will cover the catalyst catalyst also very important for chemical kinetics because it can change the uh, rate of a reaction it can make a reaction faster or slower so this is my uh, module 4 and uh, this is the lecture uh, 18th lecture and this is chemical kinetics uh, catalysis uh, part a now in this lecture i will i will cover these topics the general concept on catalysis i will tell you tell you what is a catalyst and what are the different types of uh, catalysts or catalytic reactions that i will tell homogeneous catalysis then heterogeneous catalysis then biocatalysis biocatalyst bio and then how the efficiency of a catalyst is determined what are the parameters you have to consider that I will discuss uh, that is nothing but TON and TOF turnover number and turnover frequency. Uh, catalyst is a very important thing today in today's um, scenario we know that catalysts are very 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 important there are many reactions which are very slow that can be made very fast uh, by using some catalyst they can be uh, some reactions can be done uh, with much less uh, energy or heat uh, if we use the catalyst those things we will discuss. Now, here you can see that this is a very important uh, topic today or um, important uh, discussion it should be that green chemistry. What is green chemistry? There are um, two persons Paul Anastas and John Warner in 2000 you see they have uh, given these 12 principles of green chemistry they are very famous persons and um, what are the two principles you can see prevent waste then design safer chemicals and products design um, less hazardous chemical synthesis use renewable feedstock use catalyst so you can see here the catalysts are also under this green chemistry um, principles okay then maximize atom economy avoid chemical derivatives use safer solvents and reaction conditions increase energy efficiency design chemicals and products to degrade after use analyze like this there are so you can see that use catalyst is also there uh, in this principle 
And not only this, you can see here if you uh, research minded or if you want to do research, if you go to the um, journals, then you will see there are many, many journals they are dedicated for the catalyst or catalysis. Okay. So, there are very good uh, um, journals like from SCS, from LCBR, from uh, RSC, you will see that there are many, many journals just dedicated on catalyst or catalysis. So, this is really a very important um, field in the field today. Now, uh, catalyst, uh, the first thing we, we it is a very simple thing, simple in the sense all of you know H2O2 hydrogen peroxide. Okay. In our school days also we have learnt uh, that H2O2 uh, many different uh, purposes we can use H2O2. Say for example, if you think about environmental uh, pollution then we can use H2O2 to degrade pollutants, organic pollutants and then if we think about our daily use then antiseptic, um, it can be used as antiseptic wash in surgery, dressing in dressing uh, wounds in surgery in dressing wounds, then mouthwash as a bleaching agent. So, they have several applications okay, in our daily life also. Now, if you just keep hydrogen peroxide, if you take a say watch glass okay, and you put some uh, hydrogen peroxide there, what you will see? You, you will not see much means uh, H2O2 will decompose uh, to uh, H2O and water and some heat will be produced. You can see it, but not very uh, vigorous way you will see. But say for example, you take um, some um, MnO2, you know MnO2 is uh, pyrolusite uh, natural ore. So, you can take some MnO2 in a watch glass and put the H2O2 there, then you will see vigorous, very vigorous uh, reaction that is happening. Okay. So, that is nothing um, that is just due to that MnO2 is a very good catalyst for decomposition of H2O2. Okay. Now, here it is shown that at ordinary temperature the reaction is very slow uh, that we can observe also at ordinary temperature, but in presence of finely divided metals or MnO2 the reaction is vigorous. Uh, so, so, what do you understand from here by using some catalyst we can make a reaction faster. Okay. So, that is the catalyst. Okay. Now, at ordinary temperature, but in presence of acids say for example, um, phosphoric acid the reaction is retarded. Okay. So, this is also a catalyst. Okay. Phosphoric acid is also not only catalyst will uh, only uh, make the reaction faster, but it may uh, make the reaction slower also. Then uh, it is also catalyst, it can be said inhibitor or it can be said negative catalyst something like that. So, that means, uh, it is a substance which uh, affects the rate of a reaction by its presence. Okay. Now, if I do not know whether you have used H2O2 uh, in your lab, uh, uh, lab or not, but if you see the bottle of H2O2, then you will see that it is kept in black colored bottle and plastic bottles okay, or brown colored bottles, plastic bottles. Why it is so? Why not in glass bottle? Why not in uh, colorless uh, transparent type bottles? Many reagents we keep in uh, those types of bottles. Here actually you know that H2O2 is decomposed under uh, heat or under light also. Okay, that is why it is kept in black colored bottle because if you keep it uh, under normal light then um, some diffuse light is also can bring uh, can uh, cause the decomposition of H2O2. Uh, and another question is there why H2O2 um, the strength of H2O2 decreases with time gradually okay? and it has to be standardized. If you are using the H2O2 bottle for long time say for example, 2 3 months then uh, in the uh, day 1 and in after 3 months. Uh, that is the uh, 90th day, uh, you cannot tell that okay, the H2O2 strength is the same, because continuously it is decomposing and um, that is why time to time uh, you have to determine the strength. Okay. But there is some standard procedures by which you can determine the strength of H2O2 that you have to do, otherwise uh, uh, the you will uh, come into a wrong conclusion, um, because your strength is not uh, is uh, is not the same 
and it is changing. So, uh, your conclusions will be wrong. What is the better way? Then, uh, because H2 uh, in all laboratories, you will see that H2 is present. So, uh, then how to uh, how to keep it? Where to keep it? It has to be kept in the refrigerators. Okay. Then, uh, at lower temperature, the decomposition becomes slow. Okay. Now, catalyst and catalysis. Um, who who has said this? Uh, who has coined this term? Who has said first this word catalysis? This is nothing but Berzelius. You all know the name of Berzelius. Okay, so uh, he has first coined the word catalysis. He observed. What is his observation? Is that he observed that many chemical reactions were accelerated by the presence of some foreign substance. Okay, by some foreign substance that is not taking part in the chemical reaction, it is foreign, foreigner. Okay. It appeared that they did not take part in the reaction, he described the process as catalysis. At the end of the reaction, the foreign substance remained unchanged in mass and in composition. Okay. So, foreign substance should have some speciality, what is that speciality? There is no change in mass after the reaction also you will see there is no change in mass and you will say that composition is also not changed. Okay. But, sometimes some um, morphology may change, sometimes morphology is changed. Okay. So, that um, so that foreign substance is called as catalyst. Okay, catalyst. Now, there are different types of catalyst as I told you that there may be positive catalyst positive catalyst means it makes a reaction faster. There may be some negative catalyst which is also called inhibitor. Okay. So, there is a very good example of formation of HCl from hydrogen and chlorine in presence of active charcoal. So, charcoal is also it is a solid substance. So, um, it can act as a very good catalyst also. Okay. And negative catalyst, you can. I have already told you that we do not want that high, uh, when we store H2, then we do not want that it decomposes, right. So, if we do not want that, then what we will do? We will uh, use something which is a negative catalyst, um, that means which will uh, um, uh, slow down the process of decomposition, okay. So, that is done. A phosphoric acid can do that. Now, auto catalysis. It is a very good experiment. Okay, it is the experiment of uh, determination means uh, determination of the strength of permanganate. You know that permang permanganate KMnO4. You know it is a pink colored uh, substance, and when the solution is pre prepared, um, it is pink colored solution or purple colored solution, and the strength. Uh, even if you take the proper weight and prepare the uh, solution. Mm, then also strength is not uh, means uh, actual strength. Okay, that is why it is called uh, called um, a secondary standard. Uh, you have to determine the strength by using another uh, standard, um, um, and that is called the primary standard. So primary standard is something whose strength does not change with time, and which you can take uh, the weight properly. Okay, so what is that here? If you see the reaction, this is the reaction between permanganate and acidic condition, and this is the nothing but the oxalic acid. Okay, oxalic acid. This is a redox reaction. Okay, here permanganate is an oxidizing agent. It is going to Mn2 plus, and uh, oxalate um, is a uh, reducing agent. It is going to CO2, and it has no color. Okay, uh, oxalic acid has uh, no color but KMnO4 has color. So, if you take KMnO4 in a burette and uh, you take oxalic acid in presence of acid you take in a uh, conical flask and if you start your titration. So, you add drop by drop the permanganate into this uh, oxalate solution then uh, oxalic acid solution. Okay. So, then what will happen? You will see that permanganate color uh, should be discharged because uh, it is going to Mn2 plus. Okay. So, uh, color will be discharged, but what you will see that in the initial stage of addition first few drops of addition you will see that color is not going very quickly. Okay. So, it is staying, 
the color is stained, although color should go immediately, but it is stained. Okay. Why it is so? Because uh, this reaction is slow reaction, but then after addition of few drops, you will see that reaction has become faster. Okay. Color is going fast, why it is so? Why it is so? Why initially it is uh, not going uh, fast and uh, after few drops of addition, then you see that color is going very fast. Why it is so? This is because this M n 2 plus which is produced in this reaction, this is acting as the catalyst. Okay. So, here catalyst is the M n 2 plus and this type of reaction is called auto catalysis. Auto means self. Okay. So, the product itself is being uh, is, uh, is acting as the catalyst that is why it is called auto catalyst okay, auto catalysis. Now, uh, this is induced catalysis, what is induced catalysis? You can you can see here this is the arsenite arsenite and this is the arsenate okay, arsenic 3 plus state and here it is arsenic 5 plus state okay, arsenite and arsenate this is an oxidation. So, in presence of oxygen uh, the, this can happen but you will see that this is not happening. Okay. But if you add sodium sulphide, sodium sulphide is also oxidized to sodium sulphate, but you will see that once you add this thing the reaction occurs. Okay. So, that means what it is the induced catalysis, induced you have induced some catalytic reaction catalysis. Okay. So, so, there are different types of catalyst and ca catalytic reactions. Now, characteristic of catalytic reaction. So, uh, catalytic reaction uh, how, how is the catalyst? What is the characteristic of a catalyst? Okay, that we have to discuss. A catalyst can only change the speed of a reaction. So, a reaction speed only changed by a catalyst. It cannot change the final state of equilibrium. Okay. So, it cannot change the final state of equilibrium. Now, you know what is equilibrium, you know what is equilibrium constant, okay. all those things I have already discussed in my module um, 2. So, that it cannot change, you have to remember this. Okay. It helps to attain the equilibrium quickly, means um, only the rate is uh, changed by a catalyst, but other uh, thermodynamic parameters cannot be changed. It accelerates both the forward and reverse reaction to the same extent that is why it cannot change the um, k equilibrium constant. A catalyst provides provides an alternative path, how it is changing the uh, rate. Okay. It is providing by say for example, I want to go to one room, there are two routes, one route takes longer time, another route, another route takes shorter time. So, route is different. So, it is going to a different route that is why it is becoming faster. Okay. A small amount of catalyst is required, um, catalyst amount is very small that is required to accelerate the reaction okay. and a catalyst remains unchanged in mass and chemical composition that I already told you at the end of the reaction, it remains unaltered the mass and the chemical composition, however, the physical nature may change. Sometimes you may use crystal, but it will go to amorphous stage like this it, that thing it can um, happen and a catalyst cannot start a reaction. So, here I have given a very nice example that we see in the school days. Okay. This is the lab, laboratory method of oxygen preparation, what we do potassium chlorate you know potassium chlorate we take and MnO2, MnO2 is catalyst. So, we mix these two very well. Okay, we grind it both the things together, okay. then we heat it, heat at this temperature okay, 250 degree centigrade in a hard glass in a test tube, hard glass test tube. After that we, when oxygen is prepared we collect it, um, collect the oxygen. So, that is the laboratory preparation, but you can tell me that if I do not use MnO2, if I just take KClO3, then whether oxygen will be prepared produced or not if I heat it whether. So, it, it can also happen, but it takes higher temperature much higher temperature. Now, you know mm. that energy we want everything fast and we want the um, energy efficient way. Okay. Energy is a very important thing today, 
okay we always want uh, everything energy efficient now catalyst is helping us in that way okay see here it is taking means at high very high temperature it is happening uh, but here it is much lower temperature so uh, catalyst is doing that um, function okay uh, or helping us in that way okay now classification of catalysis you know uh, there are many different kinds of catalysis catalyst like uh, H plus acid catalyzed reactions we have seen, we have seen uh, um, base catalyzed reactions also, Lewis acids you know see, uh, aluminum chloride you already know that this uh, in acid base chapter I have told that what is Lewis acid, what is Lewis base. Now, aluminum chloride you know Lewis acid, so this is also can act as a catalyst. Now, some organometallic complexes, you know what is organometallic um, compound, organometallic where the uh, carbon metal bond is there that is called organometallic. Okay? So, Grignard reagents for example. So, organometallic complexes that can act as a catalyst, organic and inorganic polymers um, they are the support material. So, they can act also as catalyst. Now, enzymes, enzymes uh, means biocatalyst you know that in our body system there are so many enzymes you, you will learn in a very nice way in the um, that uh, environmental microbiology that uh, enzymes the function and all. So, enzymes you know very complex molecules and they, um, they have uh, specific sites uh, to, to carry out uh, specific reactions. Okay? So, enzymes are also good catalysts then how to classify them, how will you classify. Okay? So, mainly the catalysis, uh, the catalyst or catalysis um, is de, uh, class, uh, divided into three uh, classes. So, one is the homogeneous catalysis, uh, another is the heterogeneous catalysis and biocatalysis. Okay? So, uh, I will discuss those things, but uh, what is catalyst promoter and what is catalyst poison? Okay. We know catalyst, but what is catalyst promoter? Um, very good example that is the ammonia synthesis. Ammonia synthesis we have seen uh, uh, when I discussed about uh, Lars-Sattler principle there I have discussed that hydrogen and um, nitrogen um, they can react uh, to form the ammonia, to form the ammonia and it needs high temperature, high pressure. I also told that the iron catalyst is needed that is finely divided iron, okay. but with iron if you uh, if you use trace amount of molybde molybdenum uh, that is along with the finely divided iron then it, at hen it can enhance the reaction rate significantly. So, molybdenum actual catalyst is this one this uh, finely divided iron, but molybdenum is a catalyst promoter. Okay it can uh, enhance the uh, uh, rate further. Okay? So, this is a promoter. Now, poison, what is poison? That is anti catalyst that is a poison. So, poison means it inhibits the uh, catalytic action, it poisons the catalyst, catalytic action. Okay? Substances which reduces the catalytic activity. For example, in the contact process of H2SO synthesis, you know that contact process and chambers process all those processes are very um, important uh, for uh, very important for sulfuric acid synthesis right. So, there uh, platinum is used as the catalyst, but if there is trace amount of arsenic arsenious oxide then it can destroy the catalytic activity of the platinum. Okay? So, this is a poison we all know poison, what is poison? So, it is poisoning the catalytic activity, it is poisoning the catalyst. Okay? So, this is the catalyst poison. Now, what is homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis? Some examples I will tell. In homogeneous catalysis, the catalyst is in the same phase as that of the reactants and products. So, it is a homogeneous condition, it may be anything, it may be gas phase, it can be liquid phase, but everything is there in the same phase, catalyst and then substrate and then pro, um, products, everything is in the same phase, then it is the homogeneous catalysis. There are very, there are many, many examples, I have only taken a few. Okay? 
this is the biodiesel production very important uh, topic today biodiesel production trans esterification of fatty acid triglyceride okay you know fatty acid you know what is fatty acid triglyceride with methano methanol catalyzed by OH minus that is um, this is an important reaction for diesel production they are um, uh, catalysis is OH minus means uh, base catalyzed reaction okay. And this I already explained uh, pseudo um, pseudo unimolecular reaction pseudo fast order reaction they are I have told you that cane sugar cane sugar um, when hydrolyzed this is in presence of acid. So, it is hydro acid hydrolysis when it is hydrolyzed to glucose and fructose there I have told levulose, uh, but glucose and fructose then inversion of cane sugar happen hydrolysis with a hydrolysis. So, uh, this is catalyzed by acid. So, it is acid catalyzed and everything is there in the liquid phase in solution. So, it is a homogeneous catalysis. Chamber process of sulfuric acid synthesis their nitrogen oxide is used as catalyst to convert mixture of SO2 and oxygen and water vapor to H2SO4. This is a very important method of uh, production of H2SO4. Okay, the nitrogen oxide is there. Okay, nitrogen oxide is used as catalyst. I will tell you the, um, the mechanisms later, but these are just the examples. Now, in heterogeneous catalysis, the catalyst and the substrate substrate are in different phases one may be solid one may be um, uh, one may be solid one may be liquid or one may be solid one may be gas ok. So, this is gas solid or solid liquid like something like that. Now, finely divided iron in ammonia synthesis by Haber process obviously, this is you know this is ammonia is gas phase and iron is in solid phase. So, it is a it is an example of homogeneous catalysis. Active charcoal in the formation of phosgene you know it is a very poisonous, poisonous gas phosgene. So, it can be synthesized from carbon monoxide and chlorine. So, there active charcoal is used. So, all are gas, but this is the solid. Now, platinized asbestos for the conversion of SO2 to SO3 in H2SO4 synthesis by contact process this is another process of um, H2SO4 synthesis they are platinized asbestos is used. So, it is also heterogeneous catalysis. So, for heterogeneous catalysis the advantage is that what is the advantage? The catalyst can be easily separated from the reaction mixture. Okay. So, this is a very good advantage in the homogeneous catalysis after the reaction how can you uh, how can you take out the catalyst? Although catalyst is doing many cycles uh, running many cycles, but still at the end if you want to recover it or if you want to separate it out then how will you separate this is a problem, but for heterogeneous catalysis this problem is not there. Now, when there is a catalyst or there are two catalysts how to know which catalyst is better. So, to know this we have to consider two things one is the turnover number another is the turnover frequency both are similar turnover number and turnover frequency. Now, catalyst turnover, num turnover number and turnover frequency are two important quantities used for catalyst um, efficiency. Okay. So, and they are defined in different ways in homogeneous catalysis, in heterogeneous catalysis, in biocatalysis the definitions of T n is uh, different. What is this in homogeneous catalysis? we define T o n as the number of cycles that a catalyst can run through before it gets deactivated. The how many runs it can go ok. So, before it gets deactivated that is the homogeneous catalysis and T o n uh, is the number uh, that is T o n is the number of x molecules that one molecule of catalyst can convert into y molecules. Say, say for example, x is going to y. So, how many x molecules uh, are converted to y molecules by one molecule of catalyst that is the for homogeneous catalyst that is the definition and T o f is nothing but T o n by time. Okay. So, similar it is similar, but uh, this is also time factor is coming in T o f. Okay. Now, heterogeneous catalysis T o n and T f are defi defined per active site. 
but active because it is solid if you think about it is a solid. So, active sites will be there or per gram of the catalyst. So, here it is defined in this way. So, the uh, that means how many number of molecule mean number of molecules it is converting per gram of catalyst ok. So, that is the heterogeneous catalysis we use and uh, it is difficult to know exactly how many catalyst molecules are there on the surface that is why uh, it is defined in this way per gram ok. Because we know how many sites are there exactly how many catalyst molecules are there that is also very difficult how many sites also it is very difficult per gram is easier most of the cases we see per gram ok. Now, bio catalyst bio catalyst again uh, definition is different T n and T f are defined by the rate measured when all the enzyme molecules are complexed with a reactant divided by the total enzyme concentration. So, this is also uh, different. So, there are different ways to tell the T f and T n, but there is the relation you have understood that what is T n and what is T f by time T n by time is T f ok very very important any any good papers also you will see that they have uh, they have calculated these values these two values. Now, industrial there are many industrial applications also for catalyst say for example, this I have already this is nothing but the Haber process you know it is the um, it is also nitrogen fixation when I will talk about nitrogen cycle then I, I will again tell it about this. Now, this is uh, you know for ammonia fertilizer synthesis ammonia is so important. So, um, this is important, but uh, you know that when um, Haber process the yield if you know the yield you will be surprised to know although it got the Nobel prize the yield is only 7 percent ok. So, after such a huge temperature and uh, uh, pressure application and even catalyst you see the yield is very less, but still it got Nobel prize that is very interesting to see that time it was so much important. Now, hydrogenation of unsaturated oil and fat. So, unsaturated uh, oil and fat this double bond is there. So, the hydrogenation can be done ok uh, in presence of rani nickel or nickel finely divided nickel as catalyst ok. So, this is also heterogeneous catalysis. Synthesis of HCl from hydrogen and chlorine this already I have told active charcoal this is also very important procedure for HCl synthesis. Now, oxidation of ammonia to nitric oxide ammonia oxidation by oxygen to nitric oxide then nitrogen dioxide then nitric acid this is Oswald process. Here also platinum gauge is used as the uh, as the catalyst these are all industrial large scale production ok. So, here you see so much application of catalyst. So, if you can develop a very good catalyst uh, even patent you can take and uh, that can be really useful really useful for some um, good synthesis then um, it is very there are many awards also for catalyst synthesis. Here you can see that oxidation of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide this is also for sulfuric acid preparation in contact process platinized asbestos or vanadium pentoxide is used as the catalyst. So, I have picked up only few, but there are so many. Now, what is catalytic converter you know that uh, this is most important uh, although I have not described much, but you can see that most widely used chemical catalysis is every in everyday life is the catalytic converters installed in the exhaust of automobiles. What is happening in the automobiles we know that in the automobiles you use the gasoline that is the nothing but the hydrocarbon. So, hydrocarbon is oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. But, uh, if it is in incomplete combustion then uh, it goes to carbon monoxide and some some of the gasoline is uh, is um, escaped out ok. So, it is polluting our environment. So, what should be our goal? Our goal would sh sh is to use some good catalyst. So, that uh, it goes to complete uh, oxidation that means, it goes to carbon dioxide um, and water. And for this purpose we use some catalyst as platinum ok. There is another thing is going on uh, when we uh, use the gasoline there in the, in the ex, um, vehicles uh, automobiles what is happening uh, the air when air is um, burnt 
at high temperature what is there in the air there is the nitrogen and oxygen. So, they uh, they uh, combine to form the nitrogen oxides ok NOx they form the NOx. So, when NOx is formed that is also polluting. So, if we can use a very good uh, catalyst then um, if we can reduce the NOx to N2 then it will it can go back to the atmosphere and then it will be uh, good for environmental purpose. So, for that reason uh, in the catalytic converter um, uh, platinum and rhodi rhodium is there are many others, but uh, these are most common platinum and rhodium are used uh, are deposited on a fine honeycomb mesh of alumina to give a large surface area. So, for catalyst surface area is also very very important that increases the contact time of the exhaust gas with the catalyst and then what is happening our desired thing is happening. Then platinum and rhodium those are the two catalysts, but they are used for different purpose. So, in one case we need to oxidize uh, the gasoline to carbon dioxide and water in another case we want to reduce ok. So, th but these two catalysts are used catalytic converters can be poisoned, but those uh, catalysts are easily poisoned by certain metals that block their active sites and reduce their effectiveness ok. Lead is one such metal. So, unleaded petrol must be used in automobile now it, it has come in the market now unleaded petrol because uh, lead is very dangerous not only for health purpose, but also as a poison uh, in the in this type of uh, catalytic converter. So, unleaded petrol must be used in automobiles with catalytic converters ok. So, this is briefly I am telling you just giving the brief the, it is a large um, field ok the catalytic converter, but it is uh, daily basis uh, this is a good application of catalyst. Now, the, <coughs> the references I have shown here uh, the same references actually uh, this book and these two are books uh, all three are books actually, but this book is very good this is also good. Um, here it is uh, for catalysis it is also some parts I have uh, collected some information I have collected from these books ok. So, uh, as a conclusion I can tell that in this lecture we have discussed about different types of catalysts and their industrial applications various catalytic reactions have been elaborated the turnover number turnover frequency of a catalyst is discussed for various types of catalysts. So, these are very important for catalysts. Thank you.